made, well, a few roast chickens on the show over the years, and it's all been in the quest for chicken with juicy meat and crisp skin. But these days, I am feeling the need for speed. So Becky's here, and she's going to show us how we can have it all. Roast chicken with crisp skin, flavorful, juicy meat, and it's going to land on the dinner table in under an hour. That's right. This is a roast chicken you can do on a weeknight. Perfect. That used to be wishful thinking, right? Right. And we're not going to compromise taste, texture, Nothing. anything. Right. It's going to be great. Or speed. <laughs> or speed. <laughs> so we're starting with a four pound chicken. You don't want a chicken that's any bigger than that or it's not going to fit in the skillet later on. So right. we're going to butterfly the chicken. So I just have a good pair of kitchen shears here. This is really important to get this job done. Yes. Much safer <clears throat> than going at it with a knife. You just want to cut along the backbone. And I waste nothing. I save these chicken backs and put them in the freezer. And any time that I'm making a stock, or even if I'm making a soup and I want to add some flavor to it, I just throw a few of those backs in there. It adds a lot of flavor. Yep, that's true. So yeah, don't waste it. So the backbone is out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to press on it with the back of my hands, getting all my weight on there, flatten out the breastbone. A nice flat bird is going to have direct contact with the skillet. That'll help it to cook faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I have a paring knife. I'm just going to poke the skin all over to help the fat render while the bird cooks. You want to take care to keep the skin intact. You don't want it to rip off, but this will make a lot of channels for all that fat to drip out, so we'll get nice crispy skin. Now I have a half a teaspoon of vegetable oil. I'm just going to drizzle this on and give them a little massage. It's going to help with crispness. And browning. And browning, yep. Now I have a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm just going to sprinkle that all over the skin. Notice that Becky pre-measured out her salt and her pepper into little dishes. That's a lot safer than grabbing into a salt box when you're working with raw chicken. That's right. And then a half teaspoon of pepper. I think this is really one of the keys to a great roast chicken is adequate seasoning. If you don't have enough, it's just not going to be nearly as good. It's another advantage of butterflying by opening it up. She's really getting all that seasoning right onto the meat because it has a hard time getting through the skin to the meat. So this is going to go from the bottom up and seasoning from the top down. That's right. I'm going to tuck the wings under. That's easy to do. You just take this little tip, tuck it right under. That's so it won't burn in the oven. And then I'm just going to tie the legs together. So this is just regular kitchen twine. And this will help the bird fit nicely, snugly in the skillet. All right. So I'm just going to wash my hands, and then we'll get this guy in the oven. So it's time to start cooking. All right. I have a teaspoon of vegetable oil here heating up. You can see it's just about starting to smoke there for us. So I'm going to put the chicken in the skillet skin side up. That's because we want to give the dark meat, which takes longer to cook than the white meat, a head start. So it's going to have direct contact with the heat of the pan. The white meat is protected by the breastbone, which lifts it up off the skillet. Really good idea. That's what we want. Nice sizzle there. It means that dark meat is starting to cook right away. So we'll turn that off and we'll head over to the oven. All right. So we're starting with a cold oven, and that's because we're going to give the dark meat time to keep on cooking from the heat of the skillet. Then when we turn the broiler on, the white meat and the rest of the chicken will start to cook. So another important thing is that we want the chicken to be about 12 inches from the broiler element. If it's too close, that skin is going to burn. So you just want to double check it with a ruler. And as you can see, we're right at 12 inches. So the chicken's been in for 25 minutes. I'm just going to, looking good. It's looking great. I'm just going to rotate it here so that it browns nice and evenly. And then we'll put that back in for another 20 to 30 minutes until it registers 155 degrees. And we're probably also looking out for the color of the skin. I know my broiler at home is very different from this one. Yeah. So it's really important to keep an eye out that it's not over browning. It's been 30 oh. minutes. Oh. oh, what a beauty. Gorgeous. What a great skin on top. Nice and brown and crackly. I'm going to wrap a little towel around this just to remind us that skillet has been in the oven. So let's check the temperature of the bird. We want it to be at about 155. And we're at 156. So let's get this onto a carving board. Let it rest a little bit. Oh, look at all those pan juices left in there. Yeah, and we're going to take advantage of those juices. Good. So we're going to let the chicken rest for 15 minutes. OK. No foil on top, right? No, we don't want to compromise that crisp skin, so we're just going to let it hang out. It'll stay plenty hot in 15 minutes. Good idea. And while that rests, we're going to make a quick pan sauce, and it's super easy. I'm just taking four sprigs of fresh thyme and one garlic clove that's smashed, just so it can release all of its goodness. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to stir that in. This is really hot because it just came out of the oven, and the heat is going to pull out all the flavors from the herb and the garlic. So we'll just let that hang out. Well, we're cooking this chicken to 155 degrees, and you're all right. That's five degrees less than what we usually say. But the reason is carryover cooking. The extent of carryover cooking depends on two factors, 
oven temp and the size of the meat that's being cooked. Now the bigger the cut of the meat and the higher the oven temperature, the more carryover heat you can count on. So the chicken's been resting for 15 minutes. I know you love to carve chicken. I love to carve chicken. You've done all the work, so let me do this. Do the honors. All right. Very easy to break down a butterfly chicken. It's kind of half done for us with the backbone removed. So the first thing that we want to do is release the twine from the legs. Now we want to get the leg quarters off of the chicken. Where the skin here is connecting the leg quarter to the breast, that's where you want to make your cut. And really, you're not cutting through anything at that point. You see, butterfly chicken, it falls apart. You can see the little demarcation where this muscle of the drumstick meets this muscle of the thigh. If we position our knife right in there, should be able to cut right through. Now, for the breast meat, first thing I want to do is get the wings off of there. So I like to take my thumb under there, kind of pull it away from the breast meat until that bone starts to pop. And then you can either take a paring knife or a boning knife and just work right in there. And that way, you get the entire wing. Now, super easy to get the breast meat right off of the bone, and we're gonna use a boning knife for this. We're gonna carve right into the middle, right down the breastbone, and since we're using a boning knife, we can start to curve it. The keel bone, the breastbone, actually is like a boat. It's called a keel bone for that reason, so it's kind of curved. We're gonna take our boning knife and just work it so that it's going against the bone. You see how I'm pulling it away? I like to use a chef knife at this point to just really carve it with the skin. Take your time for this. You're not gonna get really thin pieces of breast meat. All right, so let's put this on the platter. The chicken looks awesome, thank you. Only needs a little sauce. Just a little sauce, and this has been sitting the whole time that the chicken's been resting, so we're just going to defat it here because we don't want a greasy sauce. We just wanna get all those delicious juices now we'll just strain this out. Look at the color. Mmm. Really concentrated chicken juices. We are ready to eat. Yay. What would you like? A little of both. I wouldn't mind a little, a little bit of breast each. meat and uh, a thigh is always good. A little bit of sauce. And a little lemon wedge. That'll kind of brighten everything up. A little squeeze will do you. <laughs> this looks beautiful. Under an hour. Carved up juicy, but really you have to taste it to tell. Mmm. Mmm. Oddly enough, it tastes very, very chickeny. Like more mm -hmm. chickeny than really long cooked roast. You know, just blasting it under that broiler really kind of concentrates the flavor. The skin's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's really nicely seasoned. It's juicy. It's juicy. It's evenly cooked. Yes. All that in under an hour. You're a fast cook and an excellent cook. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. Well, our speedy recipe starts with butterflying a chicken. Poke holes in the skin, then sear the bird in a hot skillet. Move the chicken to the broiler to finish and turn those drippings into a fast jus with thyme and garlic. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a fast and furious and fabulous recipe for one hour broiled chicken and pan sauce. Incredible. That's fast food. So good. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.